It's not often that a species thought to be extinct gets a second chance at life. But fortunately, the black-footed ferret was one of the lucky ones. At the turn of the last century, a national effort to eradicate prairie dogs, which were considered a pest, had dire consequences for the black-footed ferret. Prairie dogs make up 90% of the ferret's diet, so with the drastic reduction in prairie dogs, the ferret's numbers crashed, and by the late 1970s, they were declared extinct. That was until 1981, when this man and his dog made a startling discovery on the Pitchfork Ranch near Matitsi, Wyoming. Well, the story goes that the neighbor down the river from where we worked, his dog killed one in the yard one night, and they took it to town to get it to the taxidermist to get it mounted and found out exactly what it was. So then the word went around the community that this black-footed ferret had been spotted and the local game and fish warden had come up with a meeting, had um, planned a meeting in town so that anybody who had any information on these things could bring in their information. Well, shortly after that was was um, planned, I was out gathering cattle and I had about an inch of snow on the ground and I kept seeing what looked like mink tracks in the snow and I thought, well, it's two miles from the river, it can't be a mink. So I started looking around and I saw my little cow dog, a little border collie, she was on point by a prairie dog hole. So I went over and looked and I could hear the ferret hissing at her. And of course he had to stick his head out to see what was going on. So immediately I knew what, that, what it was. Doug took these now famous photographs of the newly discovered ferrets, and they have appeared in publications across the country, including National Geographic. Upon investigation, biologists determined that the Wyoming colony consisted of about 120 black-footed ferrets. But in 1985, after two disease outbreaks had killed nearly all of the remaining ferrets, the last 18 individuals were captured to start a breeding program. Now, 30 years later, Doug is in the company of ferrets again, this time in the Aubrey Valley near Seligman, Arizona. My family kept sending me clippings from things that had been going on in South Dakota, etc. So I've got a scrapbook on ferrets, but I was actually on the Game and Fish website looking for hunting information and saw that they were going to do this count up here this spring. And I didn't even know that they'd been you know, transplanted down here or anything. So I thought, well, this would be a great thing to do because I'm retired now. I didn't have much else going on. And I'd always, I've always been a wildlife fanatic. So I thought this would be great, and it was. We had a heck of a good time last night. Doug and about 100 other volunteers are taking part in the Black-Footed Ferret Spring Spotlighting event. Aubrey Valley is one of 19 locations across the country where ferrets have been reintroduced into the wild, and twice a year, they set out to count the population. As soon as you get your data sheet, you want to fill this top part out. The people that are new that have never done it before, we'll give them a, like a, an hour training session on how to do it, and then we bring them out into the Aubrey Valley where the ferrets are, and we'll sign them up with teams. Usually, we sign up a new person with someone who's done it before, and we show them how to set traps for the ferrets, and also we have to spotlight for them. So you sit in your vehicle or you can backpack and you shine your spotlight. When you see a ferret, you run out to it and stick a trap in there and then you have to plug up the burrow holes around it so that the ferret doesn't come out like an exit hole, an exit burrow. And then you just keep checking that trap until the ferret pops in. Once a ferret is trapped, it's taken to a processing station set up along Old Route 66. There they run a scanner over the ferret to find out if it already has a microchip tag in it. If it does, then that means this ferret has been captured before. If it's a recapture, then we'll just give it a canine distemper shot and just check it out, make sure it's doing well, and then we'll release it. But if it's a new one, then we'll anesthetize it in like a little, what we call a gas chamber, and we'll take it out and we'll give it a pit tag and we'll give it a shot of canine distemper and penicillin to fight off any infections it may be getting and then also we'll assess its health. We'll look at its teeth and its eyes and see how it's doing and weigh it and then put it in a pet carrier and then give it to the person that brought it in and then they'll bring it back out to the exact same borough where they captured it from. 
Since black-footed ferrets are nocturnal creatures, the volunteers must work all night over several days to make the event a success. For Doug Brown, just seeing the ferrets in the wild again is its own reward. Oh, they're just, they're just really darn cute little critters. You know, they're, they're fun to watch. They're, uh, I don't know, just because they're rare partly. You know, it's just uh, amazing that such a specific predator is still going. You know, it's still able to survive, I mean, with uh, help from us. The Black-Footed Ferret Recovery Program is doing well in Arizona, and a record 96 ferrets were captured in this spotlighting event. This exceeds Arizona's objective, which needs to be met before the species can be downlisted from endangered to threatened on the endangered species list. All states participating in the reintroductions need to meet their objectives before the ferrets can be considered recovered and no longer in danger of extinction. In Arizona, the Heritage Fund helps support the Black-Footed Ferret Program. We really got lucky this time. We can't let species get to the bare nub like we did with this one. Um, you know, if we hadn't found that founder population, we thought this animal was extinct 30 years ago and, and we got lucky and we got a few of them. And so we just can't, we need to be vigilant uh, on other species that, that they don't get in as bad a shape as the ferret did. The Phoenix Zoo was the site of a triple anniversary celebration for the black-footed ferret. 2011 marked the 30th anniversary of the discovery of the last black-footed ferrets in the wild, the 20th anniversary of the Phoenix Zoo's breeding program to help recover the species, and the 15th anniversary of Arizona's Aubrey Valley being selected as a reintroduction site. The Phoenix Zoo has been an active participant in the conservation and reintroduction of black-footed ferrets since the opening of their first breeding facility in 1992. As one of only six facilities in the world that participate in the species breeding program, the Phoenix Zoo has produced nearly 400 ferrets, 85 of which have been released in the Aubrey Valley. I think for us, one of the really special aspects of it has been our ability to work with the game and fish folks and the fish and wildlife folks up at the release site in Aubrey. Having that connection and having the ability to see and really work with both sides of this kind of a program is such a privilege. And it's so much fun to be able to see the babies here, raise them up, and then maybe two years down the road be spotlighting in Aubrey and find that ferret. Back in Aubrey Valley, the ferret project crew is getting a special delivery. 21 new ferrets to be released into the wild. Tonight we're getting uh, an allotment of 21 ferrets that are coming from the National Conservation Center from Colorado. Several females and quite a, bit, quite a few males and several groups are going to go out and release them into several high density areas. The Aubrey Valley population is considered self-sustaining, so they haven't released any new ferrets here since 2006. But the Conservation Center ended up with these extras, and by releasing them, they hope to boost the genetic diversity of this population. A few of the ferrets actually originated from the Phoenix Zoo's breeding program. He was born, he's one of Lorelei's kids. He was born at the zoo this spring. The ferrets are taken to established prairie dog sites to be released. With all the lights and human activity, it took more than a little coaxing to get the newbies out of their carriers and into their new homes. <laughs> Eventually, all of the new ferrets were released into the Aubrey Valley site, bringing the goal of recovering this species one step closer. Can we recover this species? I believe we can. In the next 10 years, it is a reality. It, it, it is one of the original mammals that was listed on the endangered species list, and I believe it will be one of the first ones that we'll be able to remove. <laughs>